Ahead of the May 29 handover, the defense headquarters on Monday vowed to resist anything that would truncate democracy. The director of defense information, Brigadier General Tuku Guso, stated this in an interview in Abuja just as the chief of army staff, Lieutenant General Farouk Yahaya, threatened to track down on potential threats to national security and warned the indigenous people of Biafra Eastern Security Network and all the fringe groups not to test the will of the military. He said the peaceful conduct of the general election, despite the insecurity engineered by the outlawed group, was a testament to the military's resolve to ensure security across the country. On his part, the Chief of Army Staff, while addressing the participants at the Chief of Army Staff First Headquarters Conference at the Command Offices, Mess Abuja, said nobody should threaten the integrity of Nigeria or attempt to truncate democracy in the country. Speaking further, the Chief of Army Staff commended the Army for its adherence to the guidelines and implementation of the decision taken at the 2022 conference as evidence in their professional conduct and a political disposition during the just concluded general elections. A former president of the Nigerian Bar Association, Dr. Olisa Agbakroba, has urged the Presidential Election Petition Tribunal to conclude petitions on the February 25th presidential election before the inauguration of a new president on May 29. The Independent National Electoral Commission declared all Progressive Congress presidential candidate Bola Tinubu as winner of the pool. But the candidates of the People's Democratic Party, Atiku Abubakar, and Labour Party candidate Peter Obi, who came second and third respectively, rejected the outcome of the election and have filed petition at the tribunal to challenge it. Abakoba, in, in a statement he personally signed on Monday, urged the tribunal to adopt the procedures used for speedy conclusion of arbitration matters in its approach to the cases. He also listed three items in the presidential election petition that can be resolved using the procedures he recommended. Abakubo ex expressed the brief that between the tribunal and Supreme Court, the petition can be resolved within seven days to cool the temperature on the issue of interim government. Anti-Atiku, anti-Tinubu rather, passengers aboard on Abuja Lagos flight, Mr. Obiajulu Uja has been arraigned before the Zuba Magistrate Court Abuja and remanded in prison custody. His lawyer, AGK Ogu, disclosed this on Monday. Uja was on Friday evening carried off a Lagos Abuja flight after he started a loan protest demanding that the president elect Bola Tinubu must never be sworn as a president on May 29. In the viral video that made the rounds on Saturday, it took the effort of no fewer than six airport security officers to evacuate him after holding up the aircraft for more than an hour as the 6 p.m. flight had yet to move as of 7 p.m. Oja was charged for public nuisance, resistance to a lawful arrest, threatening violence and conduct likely to cause a breach of peace contrary to section 396, 267, 188, 172 and 144 of the penal code law. The lawyer noted that his client was admitted at the Muhammad Abubakar Police Hospital, but the hospital did not have a psychiatric, a psychiatric rather, doctor and psychologist to examine him. Aku further noted that his client's, his client's bail application was coming up on Thursday. The old Progressive Congress in Delta State has been divided over the expulsion of the Deputy President of the Senate, Ovie Omo Agege, 
from the party over alleged anti-party activities. The Ulebo Isaac-led Delta APC Executive Committee announced Omar Gege's expulsion in a letter dated March 31, 2023. Omar Gege, the governorship candidate of the people of the APC in the Delta State, lost to the candidate of the People's Democratic Party, Sheriff Obori Vori, in the March 18th governorship poll. The expulsion letter signed by Isaac said the decision was taken by the Delta APC Executive Committee at a meeting held on March 31, 2023 at the State Secretariat in Asaba. The letter said the executives reached the decision after deliberating on the notice of re resolution of expulsion of Senator Ovi Omoagege, which was submitted by the Executive Committee of the Orogun Ward and Ugeli North local government. However, in a twist, the Omini Soboti led leadership of the APC Delta State described these behind Omoagege's expulsion as ramble rousing imposters. A statement jointly signed by Soboti and State Secretary Peter Akarogwe set the res the set the signatory the signatories to the purported expulsion are not only dubious imposters but very reckless with their publication. Justice Nasifat Lawa Musa of the Plateau State High Court on Monday restated Abok Ayuba as the Speaker of the House of Assembly more than 18 months after he was removed. Ayuba, who represents the Joss East constituency, was impeached on October 28, 20, October 28, 2021, by some members of the State Assembly in controversial circumstances and replaced by another lawmaker, Yakubu Sanda, who represents the Penn Ghana State constituency. Dissatisfied with the process that led to the impeachment of Abok, two members of the House Group 2 form representing Just South State constituency and TM Pifa Jinfa representing Lantang North North constituency approached the court for address. They sought, among other things, a declaration that the sitting of the Plateau State House of Assembly on Thursday, October 28, 2021, between the hours of 6 a.m. and 7 a.m. in is unparliamentary and in violation of the provision of Order 6 rule of the Plateau State House of Assembly Rules 2021 and therefore unlawful, null and avoid. In delivering her judgment, Justice Musa reinstated Abok Ayuba as the Speaker of the Plateau State House of Assembly while granting an injunction restraining the current Speaker, Yakubu Sanda, from parading herself as the Speaker of the Assembly. The court also granted that the sum of 20 million naira be paid as exemplary damages to the climax and a, con a consequential order to the effect that all the anomalous salaries and bonuses and allowances of the reinstated Speaker be paid from October 28, 2021 till the day of the expiration of his term as the Speaker of the Assembly. Justice Tijani Rinjim of the Federal High Court sitting in Lagos on Monday granted an order of interim forfeiture of the sum of $725,334,891,000 and 74 carbo and plots J37A218 close Second Avenue, Banana Island, Ekoi, Lagos, allegedly diverted from the Nigerian Maritime Administration and Safety Agency. The judge granted the order following a motion expertite filed and argued by Economic and Financial Crimes Commission counsel Bikisu Buhari. Buhari informed the court that the sum was reasonably suspected to be proceeds of unlawful activity while the property was reasonably suspected 
to have been acquired with proceeds of unlawful activities. EFCC linked the money and property to a former NEMASA Director General, Dr. Patrick Aboku Lokeme. Buhari also begged for an order directing the EFCC to publish the interim order in a national newspaper for anyone interested in the properties sought to be forfeited to appear before the court to show cause within 14 days while the final order of a feature of the said properties should not be made in favor of the federal government of Nigeria. While granting their application, Justice Rinjin said she has listened to the submission of counsel and pursued the affidavit in support of the application together with exhibit and find merit in the statutory application. The National Emergency Management Agency Amanda received another batch of 144 stranded Nigerians from Niemi in Niger Republic. NEMA Coordinator Kano Territory Office Dr. Nuruddin Abdullahi disclosed this while receiving the returnees at Malam Aminu Kaduna, Malam Aminu Kano International Airport in Kano. Abdullahi, represented by NEMA Kano Head of Human Resources, Mr. Suleiman Said Abdubakar, Abdu said that the returnees arrived at the airport at about 2.30 p.m. He said the returnees were brought back under the care of the International Organization for Immigration from Niemi through a voluntary repatriation program. Dr. Abdullahi said the program was for the distress who had left the country to seek greener pastures in various European countries but could not afford to return when their journey became frustrated. 